Welcome to Film and Page. I'm Dominic, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the horror novel The Nest, originally published in 1980, written by Gregory A. Douglas, originally published by Zebra Books. And the edition I'm going to be taking a look at is the Paperbacks from Hell edition, published in 2019 by Valancourt Books. And this book is about 292 pages in length. Under the luminous moon, the garbage dump on Yarkey Island off Cape Cod began to shudder and vibrate grotesquely. It might have seemed an illusion of the moonlight on the quiet Atlantic that serene summer night, but the strange phenomenon near the beach was no mirage. It was unmistakable, as it was mysterious and ominous. The thin topsoil over the island's refuse was trembling with an eerie drift. It was a sluggish and sickly motion, as if mounds had turned into a viscous muck, or mucidly floating on a hermetic current oozing from the depths. Without seeming reason, the slimy flux would stop and then pulse again. Sometimes an unearthly bulge appeared, like a tumor or festering pustule that seemed ready to split open almost as if a buried-alive victim were straining to push out of a moldy grave. A viewer might, with stopped heart, expect to see the excrescence burst and a cadaverous hand lift a bony claw into the night. But there were no witnesses to the shifting motion or to the maddened rats that began to fling themselves wildly out of the garbage piles. The vermin were squealing with agony as they sprang into the night air. Their wreathing bodies were as bizarre as their gyrations and screaking. They were covered not with fur, but what seemed to be shells scintillating in the moonlight. The pinpricks of fire on their rodent bodies flashed crazily over the dump with a metallic sheen until there was a quick change to the crimson of blood. The rats were cloaked in sequins of death, a nightmare scene out of an animal hell. So here is the physical copy of The Nest. And as you can see, it's got that retro look to it with the font and the cover. And, and that's the appeal, I think, of the, this line is those provocative covers that you don't really see anymore. Uh, a lot of it is just graphic designs on books and stuff like that. But, I mean, the cover for this is absolutely amazing. Now, as for the quality of the book itself, it's done in that paperback style. So it's got that dimension that, that the paperbacks usually have. And uh, all the books in this line have that logo in the corner. And here's the back of the cover. It was just an ordinary garbage dump on a peaceful Cape Cod. And there's the spine. So the overall quality of the book is pretty good. It's pretty solid. And the pages, one thing I noticed though, the pages are like really white. Since they were kind of going for more of a retro look, it would have been kind of cool if they purposely the page is just a little bit yellowed as those old paperbacks over time the pages with kind of like yellow from the outside in so it'd be kind of cool if they kind of got that effect on these but not a big deal i guess so overall uh, it looks pretty cool and it looks cool on the shelf so that is the physical copy of the nest So as always, before I get into the book, I kind of like to talk about a bit about how I discovered this book, my background with it. So uh, some time back, a few years ago, I did a video and it was a video where I was complaining about uh, book covers and how over time book covers seem to be getting worse. And it's something that's been going on for probably at least 20 years now. And the two ones that I find this really affects is science fiction and horror, but horror even more than science fiction. And so in that video, I gave a few examples. So the two examples I gave, uh, the science fiction one was Red Mars. When you see the original cover, cover for Red Mars, it's this really nice painted science fiction scene. It looks really cool and it really just wants to, it draws you in and makes you want to read that book. And the other example I gave was Key, Stephen King's It. 
So you have the original really nice painted cover for it. And then you have the new version that looks really bad. And it looks like it was just done in Photoshop really quick. And so it's big, huge difference between the two. So after I made that video complaining about that, I kind of wondered, did anyone else notice this? Is it, or is it just me? Or uh, are there any anyone else who ever make any videos of this? So I did a search on YouTube to see what I could find. And so I discovered a video called Horror Books Have Lost Their Identity. And this was uh, a video that was put out by a YouTube channel called In Praise of Shadows. And it is a very good video. So in this video, I discovered a few things. Uh, I discovered the author Grady Hendrix and his book, Paperbacks from Hell. Also the publishing company, Valancourt Books, and this book right here, The Nest. So when I saw the image of this book pop up in that video, uh, it really grabbed me. I thought, wow, that's a really cool looking cover. That looks like a really interesting book. So Grady Hendrix is an American author, journalist, and screenwriter. He wrote the book Paperbacks from Hell, which was published in 2017. And, and what it was about, it was about the history of horror paperback books in the 70s and 80s. And back then, I guess there was a boom in paperback horror novels. And the thing about them that really stood out was they had these really crazy painted covers and Paperbacks from Hell talks about that. And in some cases, a lot of these publishers would have this really amazing cover that, and that initially would sell the book, but really there was nothing going on for the, as far as the story goes. And uh, so Paperbacks from Hell became really popular and it became a must have for fans of uh, horror paperbacks. And so now, in response to that, Valancourt Books decided to publish some of the books featured in Paperbacks from Hell. And uh, some of these books have been out of print for years. And one of those books is The Nest. So, like I said, I saw this cover, absolutely loved it, and had to get this book. Just the whole idea of a horror novel revolving around cockroaches really appealed to me. So I got the book. And that's the story of how I came to discover this book. Now, with that out of the way, I'll give a non-spoiler review first. So there won't be really any spoilers in this part of the video. So I'll give a spoiler warning before I get into more details about the book and the story. So the plot of this book is really simple. Due to a new kind of pesticide used on Yarky Island, the cockroaches have mutated into a horrific new type of cockroach. One that when in a large group or a swarm can devour a whole human in minutes. So the residents of this island are under siege by these mutant bugs. And with the help of some out-of-town scientists, they must find a way to stop these nightmare creatures. And that's it. Very simple plot. That's the plot in a nutshell. So now, the thing, as I was saying, the thing about this book is the cover is absolutely awesome. And the cover, they just, the artist knocked it out of the ballpark with this one. This cover is firing on all cylinders. But now, the actual story, when you get in and start to read this thing, there is no gas in this tank <laughs> and I have to be honest I was really disappointed with it this is a book I really look forward to reading and the thing about it is there is like really no story here and there seems to be like no main characters there are some main characters but they're written so thinly and like all the other characters that there's it feels like there's nothing going on it's just like the book is like a series of uh well-written cockroach attacks on people and but w once that's not happening the story comes to a grinding halt uh, and, and for a book that was only 292 pages it took me a long time to get through this book it was a really hard read and it felt like a lot of times like a chore so uh, that is the problems with the book and and, and that's pretty much my spoiler free review now, I don't really say this very often, and this is probably the first book I've said this about on my channel, but I can't recommend this book at all. If you want to try out the line of paperbacks from hell, don't start with this one. Go and get another one, uh, because I think you'll be really disappointed in this one. Skip this one. Give another one a try. So that's my spoiler-free re review. So now, spoiler warning, if you care or not, because now I'm going to talk into more details about the story and some of the things I liked and some of the things I didn't like. So here are the, some of the things I liked. So first of all, the cockroach attacks are very well written and very gory. Uh, so that part of the book is good. So the author does a really good job of 
detailing out these attacks and they, he really paints a very disturbing disgusting gory picture in your mind as these people are getting devoured and in these horrific ways by these cockroaches uh, so that's cool and the other thing this book has a really high body count a lot of people die a lot of characters die in this story and the other thing the author pulls absolutely no punches on who dies so er everyone is fair game so cute animals uh, people's cute pets get devoured by these cockroaches uh, small children get devoured by these cockroaches men women old young uh, doesn't matter everyone is fair game in this book when it comes to these cockroaches so i like that that was kind of cool and the other thing i like the setting of the book uh, the book where they're where it's set on this island yarky island and the residents are a little bit backwards more like old world and so it, it kind of gives the story more of an isolated feeling which uh if the story, which is a shame, if the story was really good, this would really lend well to the story because they're, they're kind of trapped on this island. It's hard to get on the island, hard to get off the island. So they're more isolated and uh, so they're more boxed in by these uh, cockroaches. So as for the things I didn't like. So like I said, no story, just a series of gory kills, even though they're well written. That's all it is. It reminds me almost of like a porn movie. Like you don't watch porn for the story, but even though some porn movies try to throw in sometimes a, a story, like you got the pizza guy coming to the house with talking to the wife, finding out the husband's not home and going in there and having sex. So you don't care about everything that leads up to the sex point. You just care about the sex point. That's, that's the whole purpose of porn. And this story felt like that. You only cared about just, okay, now the cockroaches are attacking someone else. But when that's not happening, there's really nothing pulling you through the story. Uh, you don't care about the characters at all now as for the main characters it doesn't really feel like there's main characters but i, I guess the two main characters in the story is dr peter hubbard and elizabeth carr so elizabeth carr uh she knew dr peter hubbard from the past and some other residents knew him so when this all this starts to unfold at first it's a bit of a mystery no one knows what's happening people just start disappearing and nobody knows why and uh, then they start to suspect there, there is something going on. They, at first they think it's rats, but they think it could be some kind of a pest, but they're not sure what it is that's starting to uh, go after the residents. And so they bring in Dr. Peter Hubbard, and he's in, his whole expertise is he knows everything about insects. And so he brings with him one of his colleagues, this other woman scientist, and uh but they're they're written in a way that it's like you can't get behind the characters and you can't care about them when they kill when they're killed because they almost have no character to them and uh, so there's this really thinly written love triangle that's kind of set up in this book between peter hubbard the uh, his uh, co his lab colleague and elizabeth carr it doesn't really go anywhere and doesn't really matter and it just feels like a waste of time when he, something else could have been done there so you have this pointless love triangle that I thought was completely boring. And then, so at the end of the book, after they had their final battle with the cockroaches and, you know, the characters uh, uh, have survived and uh, then the author decides to continue expanding upon the relationship of Dr. Peter Hubbard and Elizabeth Carr, two characters I never cared about once in the whole book. I was just like, okay, I'm more on these characters. And then they kind of profess their feelings for each other. And then he throws in this love scene that feels kind of tacked on at the end that you just don't care about at all. I didn't anyway. And I just really had to power through it just to get to the end of the book. I just wanted the end and just felt like an obstacle towards the end. So again, a pointless love scene. So those are all the things I didn't like about this book. And now because of everything that I pointed out in this book, it really, really dragged. It took me a long time, as I said, to get through it. It really dragged. It had really slow pacing for such a short book. And it's one of those books, I don't know if anyone's ever experienced this, but you sit down, you go to read it, and when you, you, know, you feel like, okay, this book isn't very good, but you know, I still want to get through it. I want to finish it. And so reading it starts to feel like a chore. And that's how this book felt, trying to get through it. It felt like a chore to get through it. And I was just thinking about all the other books I could be reading instead of this one. So, uh, and that's really unfortunate because I really looked forward to reading this book. So, as I said, I, I can't recommend this book at all because of the flaws that I pointed out. And it makes for a very boring read. And as they say, you cannot judge a book by its cover. And it's books like this that make that saying true, <laughs> unfortunately. And 
if I were to make a top five list of worst, worst books I've ever read, this book might actually make that list. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you at the next one. I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.